So let's take a look at cascading multiple quantums together. Now, perhaps one of the most attractive features of the quantum system is the ability to cascade multi-quantum units together. So in addition to having the ability to connect two ADAP banks per each quantum, which essentially at 44.1 or 48K could give you an additional 16 channels of IO, we also have the ability to daisy chain up to four quantums together in a single system. Now it's worth noting over here that all of the details in terms of cascading multi-quantum setups, or as they refer to aggregating devices, can be found within the quantum series owner's manual. So if you head over to personas.com, and I've just gone over to the products and selected the quantum series interfaces, if we scroll down here, just to the bottom, we have this download section. Once we hit this download section, underneath the universal control application, we can see we have this quantum series owner manual. And I've already gone ahead and downloaded this. And if we look at section 5.1 and 5.2, you'll notice that we have detailed instructions on cascading multi-devices together. So it's worth noting that there is an online owner's manual that goes over this in detail. But what I wanted to do in this circumstance is just have a look at setting this up. Now I'm on a Mac computer over here, so the concepts are similar, although it slightly varies with a Windows system, and we'll have a look at the manual in a moment. So in order to do this on a Mac system, our first step is we need to find our audio MIDI setup, and that's found within the utilities folder in your applications. Now, first things first, you'll notice here, if I just move this down a little bit, I have Universal Control Launcher open here. I currently have three different devices connected. I've got my Studio 192 mobile, which I'm using for recording my voiceover for this video. And then in addition to that, I have my Quantum and my Quantum 2 set up. Now, one thing worth noting about the way that I have these set up is as opposed to having the Quantum and the Quantum 2, each connected to a separate Thunderbolt on my Mac. I have my main computer, which is connected to my main quantum, which will be my master quantum. And then I'm using a shorter Thunderbolt cable to come out of my master quantum. And then I'm going into my quantum two. And we're gonna just slave the quantum two to the aggregate system. All right, so enough of that talk. Let's talk about how to do this. All right, so essentially in order to set up an aggregate device, very simple. The first thing I need to do is select my quantum. Then I'm gonna click this plus symbol and I'm going to click create aggregate device. Now from here, I'll just go ahead and I'll select the quantum, which has made it my main device and also it will make it my main clocking reference. And then I'm just gonna select the quantum too. Now in the quantum two, you wanna enable drift correction. So this will help make sure that the timing and the clocking is accurate. Now it's worth noting that the clocking can happen over the Thunderbolt cables. So technically this would be all you need to do to get going. But it's also worth mentioning that for best accurate and most stable clocking, Personas highly recommends using a BNC cable. So what I'm going to do right now is out of the main quantum, which I'm using, which is my full size quantum, I'm gonna come out of the BNC and I'm gonna come into the BNC on my quantum too. So I'm just gonna go offline for a second and quickly make that connection. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've connected a BNC cable, which is coming out of my main quantum and into my slave quantum, which in this case is the quantum two. So now essentially that's it, it's done. And if we wanted to, we could come in here and we could rename this. So I could call this quantum and then we'll use the plus symbol quantum two. Now I'll go ahead and push return. And now this aggregate device has been created. Now there's one other thing I wanna do over here. Like I mentioned, for really accurate and stable clock, you really can't beat the performance of BNC word clock. So the one thing that I need to do over here is I need to make sure that I set my quantum two clock source to BNC. So let's go ahead and let's choose our quantum two. Now you'll notice here when we're selecting the different tabs, which represent my quantum and my quantum two, we have this little icon, this radar type looking icon on the left side. If ever you're connecting multiple quantums, and let's say you are connecting multiple full-size quantums, and you wanted to identify which one is which, it's very easy for us to click this little icon 
And then you can see, as I click this, we have this little purple flash that happens on the power icon of the connected quantums. Now, the next thing I want to do over here is let's just go ahead. I'm just going to move this out of the way. The quantum two over here, we want to make sure that we set its clock source to word clock sync 48. Now, it's worth mentioning, let's just select the main quantum for a second over here, that if you have something connected and there is no word clock connected to the quantum, you'll notice because I don't have anything connected to my main quantum's word clock or BNC connection, it says no lock. But when we select the quantum two, we have the option word clock sync. I'm going to go ahead and choose word clock sync. So now what's happening is the quantum two will follow the clock of the main quantum, regardless of which sample rate we switch to, we don't have to worry about it. That's all taken care of. Now, like I said, you don't need to do this, but using BNC word clock guarantees the most accurate word clock sync available. Now, it's also worth mentioning that if you're clocking using a Windows system, then you have to use the BNC word clock in terms of clocking your slave quantums to the master quantum. All right, so that's it on this side. Let's go ahead and we're gonna open up Studio One. Now, I currently have this open while I was creating this aggregate device. So let's go ahead and close Studio One and then we're gonna reboot Studio One over here just so that this can rescan everything. And now I've already gone ahead and created a new song, Cascading Multiple Quantums. Let's go ahead and open up our preferences in the audio setup. I'm going to go ahead and choose my newly created aggregate device, which is Quantum plus Quantum 2. All right, so now we have the Quantum plus Quantum 2. Now, a couple things to note when working with this is we obviously want to go into our I.O. setup and we want to reconfigure things because now that we've added the two quantums together, we have additional inputs and we have additional outputs. So you can see our first quantum over here we have all of the inputs, the spit of fins, and then we have our 16 channels of ADAT plus our talkback mic. And then as we add the quantum two channels, we have our additional mic line instrument one and two, and then our mic line three, four, another set of spit ifs, and then another set of 16 ADAT ins. So depending on how many channels you wanna have access to, we can go ahead and just continue to add these mono tracks in order to fill out the full channel count of IO that we have available. And as you can see, this is a really, really high channel count. So I'm just gonna go ahead, keep clicking these mono inputs over here. Looks like we have three left. And now it looks like we have our total of 49 inputs. Of course, that's including the talk back built into the master quantum. Now I just wanna go ahead and click apply. Keep in mind, if you need any more explanation on this IO setup, just have a look on this playlist and we have a video specifically for customizing and configuring the audio IO setup in Studio One for your interface. Now I would go over and head to my outputs over here and I could go ahead and do the exact same thing. So let's just leave this for now and I wanna make note of a couple things. First of all, when you have your audio device controls enabled, as we know, we have access to some information in terms of basic preamp gain for our tracks and phantom power. In addition to that, we can toggle between active state of minus 10 or plus four by clicking over here. And in addition to that, we also have some basic routing in terms of our monitoring stuff that's happening on the right side of the main outs. So we've got our talk back, We've got our built-in talkback volume in terms of setting the preamp gain of the built-in microphone for our talkback. And we have our headphone routing and we have our dim, mute, and mono. Now, the thing I want to discuss over here is headphone routing with respect to using an aggregated quantum setup or a multi or cascaded quantum setup. Now, based on the master device that you have set up for the aggregate device, your headphone routing will be available for that master device. So in this case, I've used my quantum one, my main quantum, I've used that as my master device in this aggregate device. So if I go ahead, come into this window, as you can see over here, click this drop down. our quantum one is our master device, it's also the clock source, and the quantum two is the aggregated device that we've set up with the quantum one. Now with respect to headphone routing, 
you'll notice that we have all of the headphone routing, the phones routing options available on this side. But we don't have any phones routing in terms of the AB toggle or the B source for our Quantum 2. That's because when you're using uh, aggregated or multiple quantum setup, the only headphone routing and monitoring controls and audio device controls that show up are the ones that are associated with the main interface that you're using or the master. So in our case, we're using this full size quantum as our master and our quantum two is being used as a slave. Therefore, we don't have any access to the headphone routing directly within the DAW. Having said that, that doesn't mean that we can't route things. So if we wanted to utilize the Quantum 2's headphone routing, then all we would have to do is make sure that we set this up in the audio I.O. setup. So for example, I could create another stereo out over here and let's just call this Q2 HP and that'll stand for our Quantum 2 headphone. Now, the next thing I would need to do, I wanna enable this as a Q source, and then I just need to make sure that I assign the headphone outputs accordingly. Now, keep in mind, when you're working with the Quantum 2, it has its own headphone routing here in terms of an A and B source, and that's still gonna respond when you're using it as a multi device. So for example, I wanna use this if I have it set up like this, it's going to be set up to monitor the main outs. If I use a B source, it's going to be set up to monitor the routing of outs three and four. So this is just something we have to keep in mind when we're working in Studio One. So for example, if I wanted to set up my Quantum 2 in terms of routing the main outs over here, then I could go ahead and do that. I could click apply. And now this Quantum 2 will respond we have a QMix out that we can send over here from all of our channels. And then this Quantum 2 will respond to the routing that's going to A. If, for example, I wanted to route this and I wanted to use the B option, I'd have to route to out 3 and 4 because that's what I have designated in my routing in Universal Control. Then I could come back into Studio One, enter my I.O. setup, and I could change this routing to line 3-4. Click Apply. And now it would respond to the headphone routing from the B source. And this is something that I can toggle in universal control, or also I can toggle this on the hardware. So a little bit confusing, but once you wrap your head around it, it can become very useful. So for example, now I'm set this to out three and four, but if I wanted to set it to the main outs, and also technically speaking, that would mean that you could also connect an alternate set of speakers to your quantum two, then I can just click this AB toggle. We'll go back into Studio One, enter our IO setup, and then I can adjust this routing to be the main outs, which will mean that it's coming out of the speakers. It will respond to the volume knob. And in addition, our headphone routing, which is hardwired to the main outs on the Quantum 2, will be available for us directly from within Universal Control or the hardware simply by clicking the appropriate tab over here. Now, with respect to Windows, this is pretty much the same with the exception of a slightly different step. So Windows, you see that we have to connect the Quantum the same way. We're going to route a Thunderbolt cable to the main one, and then we're going to come out into the additional slaves, and we can do up to three additional slaves. Now, the main difference here is that you'd want to be selecting the Quantums in the Universal Control Launcher, and you need to adjust their priority via the aggregation order. So for example, in this instance, you can see over here that for the additional quantums, we're using a word clock sync and we're using an aggregation order set to two, which is indicating that this would be the slave quantum. So you would just go ahead and set these all up and then it's gonna be the same principle. You're gonna to wanna to come into your IO setup and reconfigure it to work with this aggregate device. So, like I said, very simple, and essentially, this allows a massively high amount of track counts to be recorded when cascading or aggregating multiple quantum devices together, up to four devices, you can get an extremely high channel count. And when you couple that with the new native low latency recording options that we have in Studio One 3.5 and above, you've got an incredibly powerful system that can do a high track count with extremely low round-trip latency. Thank you.